I want to correct the, uh, the false, false perception that Mesopotamia is the beginning of civilization on Earth. I think there were older ones, not only this one, that there were even more. And uh, we're going to uncover it. You see, uh, history is only what we know so far. What we know so far, what we've dug up so far. We used to say there's not a whole lot more there that we haven't dug up yet. You know? We've got to keep looking. So uh, I intend to do my best. And I think uh, there's a strong case for a civilization on the Sunda shelf for the reason that's already been talked about, that the whole of the Sunda shelf was exposed during the last ice age. Dry land, that uh, Indonesia was not an archipelago. It was a, a vast continent sitting directly under the equator and therefore must have been a prime piece of real estate at the time when the ice caps were huge, uh, where Europe was under ice, covered in ice, so that uh, you know what peoples there were would have been pushed towards the equator because of the climatic conditions. And uh, they would have found a perfect spot on the Sunda shelf. Uh, if that's enough to start a civilization, well, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that's, that's why the civilization started, just through the climatic conditions. You have many things that can spark off a civilization, such as population density. You know, we don't know how dense was the population. But genetic evidence is emerging now that animal husbandry and uh, farming started in Southeast Asia. Now we have that clear piece of evidence. All the domestic animals that we use have their origins here. That's the pig, the chicken, uh, the buffalo and a few others. They've all originated from here. They're from the species that Southeast Asia have gone through the, uh, to other parts of the world. We know that. That's a very good indication because civilizations cannot, uh, cannot come, come to be without these two inventions. They are, after all, the two most important inventions that humans have made farming and animal husbandry. Without them, you cannot have a civilization. Hunters and gatherers don't make civilizations. They, they're tribal. They have to move. They're nomads. They don't have structures. Uh, they don't have cities. And they don't have, most importantly, they don't have a surplus of food. So humans, as long as they're struggling for their survival, they haven't got time to sit back and develop ideas about life or arts or religion or anything. They're too busy hunting and gathering and staying alive. So uh, without these two, we've got nothing. And when you look at the climatic, climatic conditions uh, uh, during the Ice Age, this would have been the best place for it. Now, where we're sitting here now, that would have been dry land, right? 127 meters below us was the sea level. So you could have been able to go out of this marina here and walk all the way to Thailand. It's a different world. And uh, the trouble was that this ice age ended with a catastrophe. It was a very cataclysmic event, ended the, uh, the, uh, the ice age. And that wiped out, almost wiped out humanity. The fact that there's so many uh, flood myths with mass, uh, uh, you know, loss of life uh, indicates just how severe, how severe this was. And there's lots of theories as, as to how the Ice Age ended, um, ranging from you know, an asteroid strike uh, creating uh, massive uh, destruction and uh, tsunamis. Just looking at the, at the Noah tale, the one that we are familiar with in, and remember there's 500 of these, not just the, the one in Genesis, They're all over the world. In, in all religious systems, they go back to any amount of time, they're all indicate there were great flooding and catastrophic events. And we know from science too that 70% of all animal species became extinct at that point. So what we see now on Earth is the, set, is, is the 30 to 40% who survived. And humanity su su suffered even greater percentage of loss. All those near the water's edge or in seismic uh, active areas 
would have been wiped out. So what happened? That's still speculation. I sort of favour, when you look at the extinctions, it must have been massive. It must have been a very big event. And you look at what the Noah tales tells us, that the flooding reached the tops of mountains. Now we know that's impossible. People saw it that way. There's not enough water on this planet. If you had melted every drop of, or every piece of ice on the planet, you've got X amount of, of water. That still wouldn't raise, raise the level of, of the water more than, say, at the maximum, what, about 12 metres? Certainly not to the tops of the mountains. So there must have been tsunamis involved in this. Gigantic tsunamis. And they were the destruction. There's massive destructions in them. As we've seen, you know, how much a, a 10 metre tsunami can do, how much damage. 10 meter tsunami can do, then imagine a 200 meter one. You know? So uh, something big happened. Was it crustal displacement, slippage in the earth uh, caused by the massive, the mass of the ice caps, destabilizing the, the, the globe? You've got to remember our, the earth's crust is like a, a thin tissue over a, it's, you can compare the earth to a paper bag full of honey. That's how thin the crust is. It's not impossible for that crust to slip. If you've got these massive ice caps, and remember, uh, 127 meters, say, that's the consensus, how, how low the oceans reached. 127 meters of the world's oceans deposited on the poles, the amount of stress and uh, the effect on the balance and spin of the earth would have been quite dramatic and then all it needed was some other external uh, gravitational force like a lineup of several of the major planets could have triggered off a slippage or you know like I said before maybe an asteroid strike whatever something big and dramatic happened to end the uh, ice age and cause mass extinction and the almost complete annihilation of mankind so it took many thousands of years for the world population to rebuild and then came Mesopotamia but uh, you know we uh, it's all sketchy what we know about this period we need to delve deeper and find out for sure there's a few things that are that are uh, mysterious to us and we and, and the idea of crustal displacement actually supports for instance the the wo woolly mammoths that are snap frozen in the uh, in the uh, f uh, permafrost zone in Siberia. How did they get snap frozen at the end of the ice age? How come that they're up there in the permafrost uh, uh, zone with the grass still in their mouth and completely snap frozen overnight? What happened? You know? Then there's the question of how come uh, Antarctica has forests underneath the ice, fossilized forests? Was Antarctica somewhere else before? Because being at the South Pole now, there's no way, even if you removed all the ice, would you have a trees grow there? For, because you have six months of darkness, right? You know, there's a few questions we need to ask ourselves. Um, I always believe if you want to know the future, you've got to draw a line from the past to the present, straight line through the present to find the future and maybe get some ideas of how civilizations are formed. Is there a pattern here? You know, are we moving forward? Is it a spiral? Is it a circle? Is it a straight line? How do, how do humans develop? Is there such a thing as the evolution of consciousness?